Hello friends, uh, in this video tutorial we will be talking about the glycogen metabolism. Uh, glycogen metabolism is very very important because glycogen is a much more complex form of glucose and glucose can be stored in muscle cells as well as in liver as glycogen. Now glycogen is, a st uh, is stored when we are having a lot of amount of glucose in bloodstream but when uh, we are in a starved condition we need to produce glucose and in those situations uh, the rapid generation of glucose can easily be done by breaking down glycogen. Glycogen. Now here glycogen is a polymer of alpha 1 fold linked glucose with alpha 1 6 branches as you can see in this picture and this branching can be found in uh, one in every 10 residues. Now liver uses glycogen as a reservoir for maintaining blood glucose level. Muscle uses glycogen as a reservoir of, of glucose for energy production because muscle need to produce energy uh, most of the time. Now Glycogen is built from a single starting point involving attachment of the first sugar to small protein called glycogenin and the glycogen is found as granules in the cytosol as you can see here in this case. Now the major glycogen degradation enzyme is glycogen phosphorylase. It requires pyridoxal phosphate or PLP for activity and uses inorganic phosphate to split the 1,4 glycosidic bond and produce glucose 1-phosphate from this uh, glycogen in each round when it degrades the glycogen. Okay, now this glycogen phosphorylase is having the cofactor of pyridoxal phosphate we have seen here. Now this uh, glycogen phosphorylase uh, is in non-hepatic tissues, sugar released in uh, trapped in the cells since it is phosphorylated. Now phos pyridoxal phosphate is a derivative of vitamin B6. Uh, which is a uh, pyridoxin. Now phosphorylase can actually uh, actually only work until four units of the branch. So that is a disadvantage of this phosph of this uh, glycogen phosphorylase. This enzyme can only act from the non-reducing end of glucose. And second thing is that this can only attack uh, and break alpha one full linkage. It cannot break alpha one six linkage. And the third important thing is that that uh, this uh, phosphorylase activity will only work uh, until four units from a branch of uh, from a branch of uh, glycogen. Okay, now let us continue. Now the conversion of glucose uh, one phosphate into glucose six phosphate is freely re reversible and is also important in utilization of the glucose because uh, we need to produce an intermediate product which can be uptaken or which, which can be taken by uh, by uh, by the glycolytic pathway. So glycolytic pathway is having the intermediate which is called glucose six phosphate. It is not glucose one phosphate. So we need to convert glucose one phosphate into glucose six phosphate. It just it's just a change or transfer of phosphate group from one carbon position to the sixth carbon position, as you can see in this picture. And this conversion is mediated by the enzyme phosphoglucomutase. And the cofactor for this enzyme is 1,6-bisphosphoglycerate. Now, 1-CBPG, uh, one sorry, 1,6-BPG is very very important in this case. Now, the key point about this reaction is that this is similar in the mechanism to the phosphoglucomutase, which needs glucose 1,6-bisphosphate as a cofactor to keep the enzyme active and phosphorylated form. Okay. Now, the de to degrade the branch points, two additional enzymes are required. One is the transferase, which switches residues near the branch point, and another one is uh, is the decarbo debranching enzyme, which hy hydrolyzes the 1,6 linkage and produces this free chain. Just we have just seen this before. Okay, now. Uh, both of these enzymes, uh, both of this enzyme activity of transferase and debranching enzyme activity is placed or is performed by the debranching enzyme. Now the glycogen is synthesized by the transfer of the glucose from UDP glucose to the end of the strand and glycogen granule. So we are having this glycogen in minus one and we are having UDP glucose. Now the U glucose is transported. It is given to uh, so so it's a shuffling of uh, glucose with glycogen. Now UDP is UDP glucose uh, UDP is released now glucose is attached to the glycogen and it will mm, uh, in incorporate with the glucose with alpha 1 for glucosidic linkage as it is it will produce glycogen with the help of the protein glycogenin uh, it will make this uh, granular structure it will and it will help it to store into the cytosol of a cell and the enzyme is required for the synthesis of glycogen is called the glycogen synthase now synthase works at the time of high blood sugar concentration because if we are having high sugar that means we need to 
stored a some amount of sugar for the future times in those situations only the storage of uh, of uh, glucose as a form of glycogen occurs now udp glucose is formed from glucose one phosphate and utp additional of uh, additional of uh, one glucose to glycogen requires an atp to produce glucose one phosphate from glucose via glucose six phosphate it can produces it so uh, glucose one phosphate can be produced from glucose via the glucose six phosphate and utp as used in this step so we are having this glucose one phosphate and we are having this utp now what it does two phosphate groups are released so only udp is there udp is attached to the glucose to produce udp glucose now this udp glucose formation from UTP and glucose is called the UDPG is mediated by the enzyme called UDPG phosphorylase because it is only about phosphorylation formation of the nucleotide sugar is driven by the phosphoryl phosphorylysis of the released PPI so this uh, so so the del G negative value gives rise to the enzyme due to the hydrolysis of the phosphate which is released right after the attachment of UDP with uh, glucose now branching occurs when branching enzyme breaks one strand and transfers the fragment to the six carbon of the glucose to another strand as we have seen here so we have a linear we are, we are having both of these are linear uh, sequences of glycogen now branching enzyme can ca come and cut a small part of the sequence here and it will take and attach this part of the sequence with uh, th this another or, or the previously created part of the sequence via the alpha 1 6 linkage and we call them uh, the branching point of this uh, glycogen synthesis and the branching point uh, is uh, synthesis is mediated by the branching enzyme and the similarly there uh, must be debranching for the degradation of this glycogen and those the enzyme which is responsible for the debranching is called the debranching enzyme and the key point about this point is that the branching allows faster degradation and synthesis since there are more ends to work on at time that's why this branching are favored all the time because it allows faster degradation and it also allows a faster synthesis okay now if we go to the control the glycogen is simultaneously being formed and degraded complexes hormonal control determines whether there is a net formation or a degradation phosphorylase activity and the glycogen synthase activity are affected by both covalent modifications by the phosphorylation event now glycogen phosphorylase when it is phosphorylated it becomes activated but synthase when it is phosphorylated it becomes deactivated now activation of cyclic AMP dependent kinase or protein kinase A or A aka protein kinase A uh, leads to the phosphorylation of both this phosphorylase and glycogen synthase enzyme. Now cyclic AMP dependent kinase is activated through a heteromeric G protein and we, uh, and we all know all uh, the signaling uh, of this G protein all the time. Now what happens cyclic AMP dependent kinase phosphorylates and inhibits the glycogen synthase directly. Now when, when this glycogen synthase is uh, unphosphorylated it is active and when it is phosphorylated it is the presence of this phosphorylase kinase it is inactivated however uh, in case of the phosphorylase enzyme when it is phosphorylated it becomes active when it is dephosphorylated it becomes inactive now you can see here higher concentration of calcium ion mm, uh, higher concentration of calcium ion make this phosphorylase enzyme much more active and even much more active for all the time now these are the two different types of or uh, two different forms of phosphorylase enzyme that are present one is phosphorylase A which is much more active another one is phosphorylase B which is less active now the phosphorylase A uh, sorry phosphorylase B can be uh, converted into phosphorylase A by attaching or by the presence of AMP and also due to the presence of phosphorylase kin kinase enzymes. Okay, now the calmodulin in another protein, uh, which is a calcium binding protein, is a subunit uh, of a muscle phosphorylase kinase. When the sarcoplasmic reticulum releases calcium during the muscle contraction, the calmodulin subunit binds to the calcium and changes the phosphorylase kinase. <coughs> to an active form and as a result of the production of this active form it phosphorylates the glycogen phosphorylase as a result glycogen phosphorylase can glyc phosphorylate glycogen you need to produce glucose 1 phosphate so that means it ultimately leads to the generation of glucose in much more amount so this is uh, the overall summary uh, overall summary of the glu glucagon signals so glucagon signals lower blood glucose level the liver responds by degradation of glycogen and release uh, glucose 1 phosphate then finally glucose 1 phosphate is converted into glucose 6 phosphate and throughout the glycolysis pathway it will lead to produce the pyruvic acid now inside the muscle 
and the epinephrine signals all the pathway epinephrine signals g protein through the beta beta receptors to degrade glycogen then the glycogen is degraded and production of glucose happens and, and it will burn up all those glucose to yield the amount of energy now uh, we we are here about the glycogen synthesis in this point now let us move on now he, these are the steps the glucose 6 phosphate is a glycolytic intermediate glucose 1 phosphate and udp glucose are a part of the galactose pathway so these are uh, the linkage of all these things now thus gl the glycogen is an effective means of sort storing quickly available substrate for metabolism and energy because we can easily convert this glucose into glycogen pretty fairly and we can easily degrade gl glycogen into glucose when we need uh, to produce energy okay so that's it and i and i hope it will help you to understand thank you